Hey you guys, today we're going to be looking at this, the Sharp Twin Famicom. And here it is, let's just pull it out here, and it's really in here. And here is the Sharp Twin Famicom. There was numerous versions of the Sharp Twin Famicom. This is the first model, which is the AN-500B. There was a later model, which was AN-505, and it came in a black and like aqua color or uh, an all red color. There was also a red version of this as well, AN500R, I remember. So, but right now I just have the the uh, the black model with maroon, kinda. And this one came out in 1986 by Nintendo, or no, well not my Nintendo, I'm sorry. Blah, it was licensed from Nintendo. Sharp licensed uh, technology from Nintendo. So here it is, it's uh, the buttons. They're hot wired in actually, the controllers, which is kind of a bummer, but. Okay, let's move this out of the way and let's just continue on here. I'm just gonna move this down to the floor. So yeah, this is the Sharp Twin Famicom. And again, it was hot wired in the controllers. Sorry, it's like ugh, on the bottom here. There we go. So it's hot wired in, so it's kind of a short cord, but I think it's a little bit longer than the one on the Famicom. But yeah, just like the Famicom, it's hot wired in and it has a microphone as well. But do you notice that one player has a select start, but the second player does not have select start. And the difference between this and the NES, aside from being able to remove the controllers in NES, the wires are coming from the side instead of the top. Normally we remember that with the NES. So, and then you have a place here to put your controllers back. And then let's take a look at the console itself. Okay, so this is the cartridge port, obviously. So you have to move that there, and then this cartridge port will open, and that's where you put the games. And then you have to switch this on so that you can put disc in here in the twin in the Famicom, twin Famicom. Notice it just says Famicom here, and it says twin Famicom there. In the later model, it has twin Famicom all the way down here, and the twin Famicom later model had turbo buttons. This does not have turbo buttons. I'd like to get the later model, but it is, the red version is really expensive, and the black and the aqua version, it's uh, not cheap either, so. And then the, the notorious thing about these is that it is the belt. The disc drive belt fails and you'll have to do it yourself to fix it, get another belt, or you have to hire someone to fix it for you. Unfortunately, this one was cheap and the belt was broken. So I can't really play disc in here, uh, but since I already have, I showed you a video, I have the Famicom disc system and I can play disc through that instead. Also, if you have one of the FDS sticks, you can just use the RAM cart and you can just put it in the cartridge here and just run off disc ROMs off the FDS stick. So you can do it that way as well. Okay, so this one is the power, reset, and this thing right here is to like eject cartridges. So you'll see that one later. Uh, I'll have to get some cartridge cartridges. Uh, and then here on the side, this is for an external controller or exter external if you want to, you have the gun uh, over here. Uh, let me see. This is a, an extension. I didn't know what really what it does, but you can close it here. It kind of reminds me of the Famicom Disk System. The RAM card has the same thing that's like this and you can hide it as well. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Probably for networking. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't actually know 100% what this thing does. Someone in the comment section, please let me know below. And then let's take a look here at the back. Okay, in the back here, there's for the hot wired ports. This is for, ooh, let me just check here. <clears throat> uh, it says RF? Okay, why would that be RF? This is, oh yeah, maybe this for RF. I'm not entirely sure, but I just use it really just for composite 
uh, video and mono audio, uh, mono audio. And this is the place for the AC adapter. So that's how it looks. And when you open these up, there's really nothing to see. Just vents here, if you're wondering. And then let's see. So another vent right there. And then uh, let's here. Let's see. Let's take a look here on the left side. Nothing. So. And then on the bottom, let's just check here. These controllers are gonna probably fall. This, you open this for extra, uh, I think this is for, if you wanted to remove the, the controllers, uh, because they're hotwired in and they get defective, you can replace them that way. And more vents here. And then this is uh, in Japanese here, the model number, the voltage. Uh, someone knows how to read Japanese, probably all warning labels regarding the system, most likely in where it's made. So probably made in Japan somewhere here, what it says. Anyway, that's how it looks. And then over here in a Ziploc, this is the power, the, the big power brick. And then let's just take a look here, power brick. And okay, so this is the, thing is that this is a lot of these things are sold without the power brick but this is the genuine one which is for an 500 you need 100 volts 7.6 uh, I'm sorry AC is 100 volts and then DC for this thing is 7.6 volts and it's a little bit hard I don't think the NES or the Famicom AC adapter fits with this so you'll have to find somewhere else some other power brick I do not know what like equivalent game system that uses this as well. Probably someone else in the comments section below knows this, but anyhow, we're going to take a look at some gameplay for this Famicom, the Sharp Twin Famicom. Ooh. All right. Oh. All right, so we have the Famicom, twin, Sharp Twin Famicom hooked up here, and we're gonna play some Mach Rider. So, okay, I'll just show you really quick. So, okay, so if you wanna eject the game, boom, there you go. It doesn't, it could, viol it could violently go, but let's see it again. Yeah, there you go, you're eject, which the NES didn't have. So, imagine with that eject button though, that wouldn't work because it, <laughs> you have to put it inside like a VCR. But anyway, let's start this. All right, there's Mach Rider. And let's just, hard to do this probably with one hand, but all right. But basically, of course, everything functions just like the regular Famicom. It's just the difference is that um, the original Famicom had only RF. You had to, you had to mod it in order to, uh, in order to get like composite video. It was not until years later when the AVA Famicom came out in stereo, not just mono, that you can play the best, the best uh, picture quality for the Famicom NES. So, so this uh, Sharp Twin Famicom and the American European NES had the same composite and mono. Uh, which was much better than RF though, but yeah, I'm not doing too well because I have to hold the camera while playing one hand, but this game Mach Rider, uh, it's a good game, but it's also hard too, so. Oh, so your point uh, here, yeah, you're gonna get hit, but at least you don't get, oh, it's the end though. So Mach Rider, there it is. We'll do another game here, but yeah, again, unfortunately, I cannot do the Famicom disc system because this thing is broken and needs a new belt. But what I can do is I can switch it over, and so you switch that like that, and then the Famicom. So you notice here that on the Shark Twin Famicom, it doesn't say Nintendo. It just says Famicom, please set disc card. So. Uh, they're just trying to differentiate themselves from Nintendo. There's no Nintendo branding on the Shark Twin Famicom as well. Nothing Nintendo you see here. It's all sharp. So that's what they did here as well for the Fam Twin Famicom. But yeah, let's turn this off and let's try another game. 
So we'll try the good old, let's do uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. Everyone knows that game, but I'll have to do a quick jump cut. Oh, let's just see. Cause I was gonna use my isopropyl alcohol again and clean it off, but let's just see how far we get. Oh, nice. Okay. Everyone knows Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah. <laughs> Brings back memories here. Of course, I'm not gonna do so well. Ah. Oh my gosh. One hand, it's impossible to play. <laughs> But yeah, the short term Famicom, if you find one, you'll have most likely have to change the, the belt. I have never attempted it myself, but I might, I got some extra, I bought some uh, replacement belts. I just haven't had time to try, but I don't know if it's going to be really hard or not. But if anyone knows in the comment section, how, how hard is it to put to replace the belt in this? Please let me know in the comment section below. So Super Mario Brothers 3. You know, these days I play Super Mario Bros. 3 on the Super Nintendo with uh, Mario All-Stars or uh, other means for on the Wii as well. But yeah, this is the original on the Famicom NES. Okay, so we got that. And now let's just do it, eject it. Ooh, yes. So we'll do it that way. And... I'll use next the uh, 402 in one. Let's see how this one works. Okay, so we have Contra, Ninja, Ninja, Gaidem. <laughs> I just got a Famicom, I'm waiting for it to get in the mail, the Famicom uh, EverDrive from AliExpress or Famicom whatever. And I have the converter so I can play it on the NES as well. All right, so yeah, let's do this. There we go. I don't know why it's blinking like that though. Okay. Probably play this with one hand. Or not. Um. But anyway, you should, if you're a fan of Nintendo, but Famicom, this system, there's many ways in order to play it now. If you don't care like this, you just want to have one, just for like, you know, like Billy's sake, or if you grew up in Japan, I guess, you, it's nostalgic for you. But, uh, yeah, this is good collector's piece. I would get the, the uh, model with the turbo buttons, though. This does not have it. It has to be the 505 model, not the 500 model. So, anyway, that's all for now for the Famicom disc system. Again, I couldn't really show it because it's broken. So I didn't bother getting any discs, not like on the Famicom disc, on the Famicom disc system. So, anyhow, thanks again. And take care until the next video. Continue on with these console retrospectives. Take care. For those just wanted to show that it really does not work. For people like, why didn't you show the disc system? So okay, this is that Arkanoid game that I showed in the Famicom disc system video. And now we'll try it again. Okay. So again, you switch over. Let's see, it's oh. Switch there, and this is locked, so you can't put anything on there. I guess it's a safety mechanism or whatever, you, or let you know that, hey, you're using the system, not the cartridge. Okay, so, all right. You see Famicom there, right? Okay, and then we see Luigi and then Mario. So let's try this out. Let me just see if I'm on the right, so, okay. So we're A, and this was working fine in the disc system, uh, the Famicom disc system in the last video. Okay, so I'll put this in. And you hear that big hum. So the belt is 
uh, it is broken, so you need that. So the nice thing about the, this, the Twin Famicom, you only need one power supply versus you need two power supplies on the Famicom disc system, one from the Famicom and one for the disc system. Although you could use 6C batteries only. But see, yeah, this is what happens when the belt is not working. It's gonna be infinitely loading like that. So yeah, so don't have, this is not working. So I just turn it off and let it go as it isn't working. So there you go. Again, just wanted to add this part, letting you know that it does not function. If you guys are wondering, all I can hear is that. So, thanks for watching about my overview on the Sharp Twin Femicom.